that, so it's kind of like a wave. So we just rotate it a little bit. This is kind of like a little bit of a process right here, um, but it is. I think it's worth it because it looks really cool. Uh, so we'll move that one out with G, and then we'll play this. So I think it looks pretty good. It kind of just uh, goes up with it like it's a wave, which is pretty nice. Um, and also, we can look through this for a little bit more things we want to do or maybe refine because I think there's some things that I wanted to do that we haven't done yet. Let me turn the audio back on so we can see any audio cues. Well, we can do the intro for now. I mean, it's just kind of coming in right now. That's not what I want, obviously. Um, but we can go ahead and uh, look for a place. We look for something to do. I think I want to. I think I want to rotate the camera a little bit as well. So right here, we will enter the rotation keyframe. So R, uh, R Y, and just click right there. And then for uh, the first keyframe, we will hit R Y and we'll rotate like this, and maybe R. Uh, y again to move it to rotate it down and now I don't like the way that looks so we'll kind of do some in betweening here rotate it up and like this double tap X and I don't like the way that is at all so maybe I can just unrotate this just a little bit because that's much uh, maybe I'll kind of maybe come up from the bottom like that now this keyframe has to go so we'll delete that one and we'll just we'll whip it up like like that and then we'll kind of have it follow itself up so right here we'll kind of just um, we'll whip it back down so we will use that many keyframes and we'll grab this one right here hit shift D move it over there and then just double tap R to move ever so slightly so that it's has some motion to it and then we will snap it back down you don't want to put too many keyframes in a too much of a small area because it'll start to jerk around, and that's not what I want. So we'll just delete that one altogether. Yeah, I don't even think we need it. All right, sweet. So uh, now there's two kicks after that snare, which is uh, which is nice. So we can play around with that. Um, one right there, and then one right there. So on this first one, I want to do something we haven't really done yet. So I. I think we are gonna uh, maybe flip one of the letters. Ooh, that looks cool. I can do that. All right, so on that first kick noise, we're gonna go ahead and go backwards two from it, and then hit R rotate I rotation. Sorry, then go up two keyframes, and then we'll double tap. Ooh, that looks good too. Oh, we'll double tap. We'll do this one first. We'll double tap. Um. Y to rotate the S around like that. And of course, whatever your font says, you'll have different ideas because you'll have different letters. Or maybe I want it to just snap all together. Yeah, I don't want it to rotate at all. I just want it to snap backwards. Um, so, and then we'll snap it backwards back to the right orientation on the second kick. So we'll grab this one, hit Shift D, duplicate it. And then we'll grab this one, Shift D, duplicate it, put it afterwards. So now it flips. Okay, now perfect. Now I want the camera to move a little bit with that because it doesn't seem like it's enough for the two kicks that's there. The two kicks are pretty powerful. So we're going to select the camera, go back to the focal length, hit I, move up one frame, and we'll we'll move it in just a little bit. So 35, um, and that might even be too much. And we find the second one, the second kick, and then we'll go ahead and hit I on our keyboard. And that's not the same. 35, there we go. And then we'll move it up one frame, and then we'll move it back to 32. All right, sweet. Now we got this. I think this moves too far up as well, so we'll go ahead and fix that. We'll move it back down a little bit. And I don't think I like the rotation on that, to be honest with you. I think we did that for nothing. I don't know why that's rotating right there, but I don't like it. So we'll go ahead and shift D, duplicate, move it over. And I'll just go ahead and uh, zoom it out a little bit, maybe. And then this one will be the default 32. Yeah. Uh, we still have a lot more animation to do because it's still kind of stale. I think more stuff needs to be going on. Um, but what we're going to do for the time being is we're going to go ahead and take a look at what we need to be doing for the background. I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift A to add in a plane. And hit S to scale it way on up there. I'm going to turn automatic keyframing off because we don't need automatic keyframe for this. I'm going to delete that keyframe we just created. 
um, and we're going to start it down here and go into the camera's view, make sure it's out of the, the camera's view. I want to be a little bit bigger than the camera, so we'll do something like that. Actually, it needs to be a lot bigger than the camera because it's going to zoom out. So we're going to do something like that, actually. And we'll move it down uh, until you can't see it in the camera's view. Looks good. Uh, now, maybe, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, sweet. Okay, so now what I need to do is we need to forget about the camera animation right now. We don't need to worry about that. We're just going to do a bit of animating to get some stars in here because I don't want to do it by hand because that's not good. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit uh, I for location and then we're going to play this. And I think uh, right there is good. So we'll go up 20 frames and then we'll just go into the camera's view and move it up out of the camera's view about there and then hit I location so now we have two keyframes uh, in there which now the giant plane will move up out of the shot which is nice but now what we need to do is we need to add a particle system so we're gonna go to the particle tab right here and hit new and we will use these particles to create some stars now uh, I'm gonna go back to uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. actually we need to start this the start frame needs to be whatever your start frame and scene is so two 50, 240, sorry, and we're going to change the end to 260 and the 240. All right, so now there's particles actually coming out. If you can see it, well, you, there you go. So there's particles coming out now, um, but the lifetime is only 50, so we need to change this to like, let's just do 300, why not? It doesn't matter. Um, now they're, they're falling down, which is not what we need, so I'm going to go down to the f uh, field weights and turn gravity off. So they kind of just stay where they are and they kind of go up a little bit which looks super sweet right um, and I like that so we're gonna actually turn the lifetime to a thousand because our end frame is eight actually, let's, let's, let's do the end frame actually, no, we'll leave it on a thousand doesn't matter uh, since the end is only eight three nine anyway so it doesn't really matter we'll go ahead and now you see we have those particles in there which looks good they're they're floating upwards um, now, but the problem is we can see that plane if you were to go ahead and, and pause it like right there and render it You can see the plane um, Yeah, so we need to actually turn that off. We can go to the Render and turn show emitter off now You can't see the emitter if I were to render it you could be able to tell but I mean you can't you can still see it there because we're not rendered But in the render viewport in the render uh, actual render you won't be able to see it So now it kind of flicks up like that. There's the particles which looks really good, but there's not enough of them But we're gonna get some lag. That's fine though uh, so we're going to go ahead and select that plane and turn the number of particles from 1,000 to 10,000. This is probably going to, yeah, look good, but it has a lot of problems with it. All right, so we're going to maybe even more than that, so maybe 20,000. 20,000 particles floating on up, and I think that looks pretty solid. Now let's go ahead and actually give them something to see, because right now only we can see it. If we render them, we can't see it. So we're going to change the render as from Halo to Object, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift-A add in a what do I want to do here um, we could probably get away with just doing a plane to be honest with you I think I want to do little tiny specks that like look like confetti maybe I don't know we'll do plane we'll see what it looks like we'll hit G Y to move it way back here so you can't see it uh, in the camera's view at all hit period to zoom in onto it uh, now we can go ahead and add a material to it with the material tab hit new go change from principal BSDF to emission and we have a nice emission thingy going on now. We will select our plane. We can hit period on that to zoom into that now. Um, and we can go back to the particle tab, which is this guy right here. Change it to object, like I said, and make sure in the object tab it says instant object. And we're going to search for plane uh, 001. We can actually name this uh, 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 plane 001. We need to change that name to uh, particle so we know what it is. Uh, now we're going to get a lot of lag now. So that's not good but it, it'll be fine if we go to the camera's view you can see they're rotated the wrong way they're actually lengthwise right now we need them to be up and down um, so we're gonna go ahead and turn on object rotation and uh, bu -bu 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 in rotation right here we can open that up and choose dynamic uh, turn randomized to maybe one actually we're gonna turn the number of particles down for now we're turning it to 2,000 instead of 20,000 so we can get some framage going on here at all uh, now if I hit if I select one of the letters in period on that,